Hey, and we're back. We think, we hope. Fingers crossed. So if France did attack Switzerland to yep. uh, clean up their borders, Switzerland's allied to Hanover, Croatia, Romania, and Russia. And France is allied to Andalusia, Prussia, and Great Britain. So Prussia and Russia would probably fight, because I feel like those two really want to have a crack at each other. Mm -hmm. France and Swiss would obviously fight, and Andalusia would be there to back up. Britain would finance it all. Yeah, we'll see if anyone else would be willing to join in. It could be a full world war. I mean, Croatia's allied with that whole Middle Eastern area. And we know that Croatia and Romania can really uh, pack a punch. And if we're looking mm -hmm. at it, like uh, oh. Croatia, 400,000 manpower. Romania, 150,000. France, 400,000. Uh, Andalusia, 300,000. Britain, 300,000. Russia, 125. Russia, 337. So mm -hmm. Even Prussia is actually looking low. And I just noticed that Prussia is actually in a golden era. So they're going to have the extra morale from that too. Oh, oh. Mamluks are going to war. Oh. Okay. So we've just oh, been... Oh, yep. We got blue flames everywhere. So we've just been told the uh, the stream has restarted. So we should be good now. Hopefully. Yeah, let's... Fingers crossed. But yes, we have blue flames. Let's go and see what is going on here. Who is being blue flamed? Yeah, Pro we have... Asia. Mamluks declared this war. The Mamlukian reconquest of Al Quds. They're fighting Andalusia and Songhai. And we've got Russia, Kazan, Mughals, Bamanis, uh, Eutia, <laughs> Persia, Romania, Croatia, Hanover. And it looks like they've done actually really quite smart here because Andalusia was not apparently allied to France or Britain. So they've effectively managed to halve the strength of that um, anti-Swiss alliance. Yes. So we've got 1.1 million troops on the Mamluk side against 337,000 on Andalusia's infantry again mm -hmm. only. Um, and Songhai could only pull in Colombia. Um, I don't think they're pulled in as a co-belligerent. No, I don't think anyone's co-belligerized. So no. they have effectively cut that enemy alliance in half by doing this. Mm -hmm. That's a... Really nice diplomatic move, I must say. And I do wonder if France and Britain are going to try and hatch their own plan to go after Switzerland. Sure and then now. Italy. What's Italy going to do? <laughs> I mean, they're allied with Prussia, but maybe, I mean, they're also allied with Songhai. They'll probably again, enter this war somehow. But if France is going to be the one starting beef against the uh, Swiss, then Italy's not allied to France. Mm-hmm. But yeah, as Chad is saying, Italy would probably want to go after Croatia so that they can get their lands back. So they could definitely get a CB manufactured quickly enough. That shouldn't be a problem, uh, particularly because mm -hmm. a couple of their cores have been taken. It's just a conquest. Yes. It is interesting. Yeah, Baham Bahamanis has said they will not endure the loss of Jerusalem any longer. For the Alliance, Deus Volt! So I mean, Crusader Kings is now leaking into EU4, but that's epic. So we've got Andalusia currently smashing up the <laughs> Jerusalem Navy. The soon-to-be-again Jerusalem as opposed to not Jerusalem. <laughs> yeah, Jer and Jerusalem's over-sieging. They've sieged uh, Jerusalem. Yep. <laughs> Another Jeru moving up the coast. Jerusalem and Gaza have gone. They're currently moving in on Tirana, which has a mm -hmm. level 4-4, which is good. And in fact, wow, if we look at Andalusia, they have fortified... Tara, Bardia, yes. Darna, and Benghazi. They're, they're going to make you work for it moving down that coast. And they've also got a second line of fortifications, Jurfa, Juari, mm -hmm. and uh, Gadarmes. Mm -hmm. And unlike certain other people in this game, they've upgraded them all to level four. Yeah, absolutely. So fighting them across North Africa is going to be a long and painful struggle. Russia spent half their money. What? There's 7k. What'd they buy? I don't know. Did they gift it? Oh, we're in the age of absolutism. It's not buildings. There's nothing under construction. I don't know what they did. I don't see anyone with oh, huge amounts of money. Madness. What, what are they doing with their money? Uh, let's see. Russia is... Oh, France is in the war. France is in the war. Um, France has declared oh, war on the Mamelukes, which is called in... The Russians, apparently. So France is now fighting against Hanover, and we've got the first oh, Hanoverian. Great Britain joined. Yep. Great 
Great Britain joined. So things Woo. are starting to spiral. So currently the only neutral nations are Bavaria, Italy, uh, Prussia, and Magdeburg. Prussia still in uh, neutral, interestingly. Yeah. And so, yeah, we've got we've got that nice. If you go to click on Jerusalem and look at the diplomatic map, there's this nice little gray wall through Europe. <laughs> And I do wonder if they've purposefully stayed out of this so that Russia can't reinforce Romania and Croatia and Easily, Hanover yeah. for that matter. Although they could come via the north. Long way, though. Mm -hmm. Well, they could come down through per Persia, but still a long way. And Croatia's massed their troops. Hanover is pouring across the oh. borders. And the Swiss are also attacking into France. Things may not be going quite how France was hoping. Oh, yeah, the Mamluks declared on France. It's a war of Mamlukan aggression, no CB. Oh. Yep. So the French are starting to move southwards for some reason. They are recruiting a lot of troops at the moment. Like every single barracks in France is probably out recruiting right now. Well, they do have the manpower. Oh, and we apparently just missed one of the fights. Mamluks just lost against Andalusia. Ooh. But we do have the uh, Jerusalem coming in. Unsupported, oh, yeah. unfortunately, and it does kind of look like that might be a stack wipe. And they've got more coming yes. in. Oh no, this is a disaster. Jerusalem might actually lose their entire army here. Because yeah. they've split their stacks in half, so they've only got half their artillery in. In the desert on this level 4 fort. Yep, there it went. Three stacks just died. Three. Three. How many troops have been murdered in the deserts? That is a loss. One way to um, rehydrate the desert. <laughs> I think it's the best way, though. <laughs> oh. Yeah, so the Jerusalem side have now lost almost 300,000 to combat to 72,000 for Andalusia. So Andalusia oh. currently taking the clear um, advantage right now. And we also have yeah. the Swiss and the Hanoverians fighting against France. We're joining this. Just at the end of the battle, 200,000 on the Swiss side against 170 on the French side. Britain is arriving with another 90,000. Hanover's got another 90,000 on the way, but I don't think they'll arrive in time. 123% discipline against 108 on the Swiss side. Six morale, but that's Britain's morale. That's going to be a lot lower than France's against the 7.1 from the Swiss. And this is coming out to be a very, very close fight. 250,000 against 200,000. And the Brits are currently fighting on a minus one. Uh, the Brits probably have the better general 464 versus the Swiss 353. It is now 270 against 270. The Swiss reinforcements, mm -hmm. sorry, the Hanoverian reinforcements arrived just in time. France coming in with just another 30 stack, but I don't think it's going to be enough because that Swiss it's, reinforcement round is just bigger. It depends on the, the dice rolls, though. It could. Right now it's a 2 it to a 1, could. so it's not a huge difference. And that's a 9 to an 8. So both of the dice staying very, very close oh. to each other. Mm, I think... Oh, yep. yep. Britain and they, France just lost. Off. And France was about to come in with 60 more K, but they weren't fast enough. They are force marching. It's the age of absolutism. So this is the age where you can get that free uh, movement speed right. buff. So, uh, Mordred, I have happy news for you. Oh, yeah. You get to go eat in about three minutes. Mordred hungers! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have so many blue flames. Only Bavaria... Um... Uh, Magdeburg and Prussia are not in this war. Wait, it's Colum Col Wait. That's Colombia. Colombia? No, no, they are in the Columbia war. Colombia joined! They are fighting the Mamelukes. <laughs> on behalf of Andalusia. I yes. don't know why that Look suddenly became Churchill, but it did. Zoom out to see the whole map. This is, uh, this is quite beautiful. So yeah, if we go to the diplomatic map mode for Colombia at the very least. In fact, who's going to be at war uh, with the Mamluks. most? Mamluks is the most, if you click on that. That's... That's the East versus West. <laughs> Almost exactly. There's this dividing line between France and Germany. We just need uh, Italy. Oh, no. Italy has joined. Wait, what? Italy's in a war. Oh, the Italy Italians are not against the Mamluks, but they joined against Croatia, Romania, and Persia. So mm. I guess, yeah, Croatia's the best one to click, click on. There we go. There you go. Um, yep. And so we just need Bavaria, Magdeburg, and Prussia to join, and every player's in a war. Come on, guys. Let's make this an epic last two hours, because we're going to be switching in a moment to Benjamin Magnus, and I believe Bjorn is going to take over for Mordred while he eats. Nom, 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 nom. And then Mordred will be back. Yep. That's but I will be gone. Oh. 
So you're not um, going to be able to witness the final well, heroic I'll be witnessing clash. it, but I won't be, you know, here commentating on it. <laughs> you won't be shouting at Russia of, oh, why haven't you spent your money? Your money, yes. <laughs> hey, Rose, how you doing? Hey, Ben. What, what a hot so switch. Already. Yeah, yeah, we're trying to do this. Uh, uh, do it you know, live. Like, yeah. There, there's a French-Romanian battle here. It uh, looks like the so. French are going to win. Uh, ooh, there's war. And here we got Hanover where Great Britain. This is where the action's at, it seems like. Um, oh, yeah, there's, there's, there's a lot going on down there, so have fun, guys. Bye. <laughs> Take care, Rose. There's action all over the place. I'm really tr quickly trying to like pop into Parsec here so that I can figure out what's actually going on. Whole world's in chaos at the moment. Lovely. Okay. I like to see it. Yeah, like I, like I told I don't know if you heard that, but I, so, so I went, <laughs> I, I was on a little stroll only uh, to see, and, and I have no memory of this happening when I left the screen downstairs and then came up and then everything was just a flame. So uh, I am very confused right now. Uh, oh boy. Yeah, no, uh, just trying to pop around, try to figure out where the battles are. And there are half a million troops fighting in France at the moment. Oh boy. Uh, so. Okay. Oh, we're looking at we're looking at we're actually looking at my screen right now. Okay, yeah. so uh, we've got uh, reinforcements filtering in on both sides, just dumping into the meat grinder. France does have a negative one modifier here, here, but with such good generals, they don't seem to care that much. But uh, what? France does look like it's going to lose. The front line is starting to falter. Yep, and then there they're gone. This much chaos, seeing half a million men just thrown into the meat grinder, I'm all here for it. Uh, let's see, if we actually go to the war, yeah, it's just war War of Memlukian aggression is, is it, no war goal, which is, which is great. It, that is, you know, EU4 all over, is that we've got the massive World War finally firing, and it's an OCB for nothing, basically. Yeah, but Ooh, that, that uh, there's two wars, right? So, it's... I'm trying to make sense out of all this. Uh, Russia, Russia is in. And uh, the, the, the Prussian meat grinder is marching south into Romania. No enemy troops anywhere in sight. Uh, we pop over to the Romanian perspective. There's 15k there with no support and no leader. Um, but that, ooh, well, let's see. Do they have, have they upgraded their forts? Uh, some? Some forts have been upgraded, others not. Uh, Bessarabia does not look like... Oh, it's level 4, but they've already breached the wall, so it looks like Romania is going to start altering pretty quickly. The Netherlands is getting sieged down. Uh, well, no, sorry, that's not the Netherlands anymore. It's Friesland. Forgot the Dutch are in Colombia now. The weird part is that Mamluks are actually winning both of these wars. So so just to recap, in case the stream, the, the viewers here, does not are not aware exactly what's going on. Uh, so... What we have is, like we said, the Mamlukian reconquest of Al Quds, which is featuring Mamluks, Russia, uh, Hanover, Finland, mm. Atuyaya, uh, Jerusalem, Persia, Bahmanis, Croatia, definitely not British, Mughals, Sindh, I think I'm missing somewhere, uh, Transoxania, Palitana, uh, Kazan. Uh, Romania yes, and Switzerland versus Andalusia, Al Yadid Freshka. Uh, well, Andalusian. Uh, it, it's it, it, it's it, it's a lot. Sorry guys, sorry to interrupt, Bjorn. I'm, I'm bopping all over the world trying to find the action here. There's stuff going on all over the place. We got another massive battle um, forming at Paris, I believe. Yeah, uh, are we on uh, Paris? We are on Paris, yeah. Yeah, this seems like to uh, France. Uh, France, uh, e de France, I guess, is a, is the main center Cleaned of up. of, uh, of uh, action here. Uh, Cleaned up there. Andalusia is uh, pretty much not in direct combat anymore. The Aizayan armies and ba one from Bahmanis have marched into Songhai. Songhai does not have very many forts to stop them, so it's just an open road straight into their heartland. There's a quite an even battle here between between this British and the Swedes. Okay, the Brits just got a lot of reinforcements, so the Brits are gonna push back the Swedes down in yep. uh, what is it called Cholet, Charolais. 
Yep, the Swiss retreat. The Prussians haven't actually seen combat yet. They are just marching into <laughs> Romania. So how are we power-wise here? So wait, wait. Uh, so Russia is marching into Prussia now and just <laughs> free territory in the north. Uh, it, we do have upgraded forts in Prussia, thankfully. Those are all level four, so it's going to slow them down. Oh, my God. I need to open up diplomatic map mode here to get a better overview of the planet. Yep. There we go. Beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Literally, literally every country is involved now. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, no, no, is that everybody? I think every that is player. everybody. Because the, every the yeah. observer and the referee are the only ones out of it at this point. And yeah. I am sorry, guys. I'm trying to bop around quickly so we're not missing big combats here and there. We do see um, some of these troops from Songhai trying to hit the main army from Ayutthaya and Bahamas. Bah Bahamas. Never going to get that <laughs> right the first time. We are force marching in to make sure we get there before there is a... Uh, a morale shock issue, but it does look like they are going to have the reinforcement advantage here. Oh, yeah, and there we go. Troops from Bahamanis are already retreating out, and Ayutai is going to be forced on the retreat as well. So it looks like Songhai has built, bought themselves some time with a solid victory there. Uh, Italy now is getting solidly sieged down by Croatia. Yeah, do, uh, do they I, even where? have an army? Oh, yeah, uh, they it's down do. in Sicily. Down in Sicily. <laughs> it's, it's, it's all sequestered in Sicily at the moment, it seems. Oh. So could could the Croatians actually... Do they have a fleet, the Croatians? Uh, could they... like So sea-wise, who, who, uh, who, who we got here? So, so Croatia has 80, 87 ships. And oh, the Mughals, are, the Mughals are on the move. 200,000 troops, 200,000 troops from the Mughals are on the march now. Say, so whose side? <laughs> I'm using Diplo map mode at this point just to see whose side who's on. Uh, they're just about to hit Prussia. Prussia is in for a, a rough time uh, getting hit by both Russia and the Mughals at the same time. <laughs> yeah, this is... Oh, here we go. Oh, man. Nope. Sweden is gone again. I I'm so sad. It's fine. We'll, get, we'll get Sweden back for you. <laughs> I care about the important stuff here. <laughs> In the middle of the chaos, Saxony has formed. <laughs> Beautiful. And... Uh, I think Italy is probably doing the worst off right now. They are pretty heavily sieged down. Yeah. And their armies are, are pretty stuck in Sicily. I, I'm not sure. They don't have the Navy to be able to get them out of there. So I think they're going to have a bit of a, a rough time in the near future. But didn't Croatia demand a one-on-one? -on -one? Ooh, big battle forming. And the Prussians rolled a negative two in the opening phase. Uh, twin battles Ooh. up here against Russia and the Mughals. It looks like Prussia is kicking Russia's ass. Yeah, thoroughly trounced them having a little bit more trouble against the Mughals, but now we have freed up reinforcements to pop in there. The Russians go in for a, a supporting attack to tie down the first attack, but reinforcement did make it into the Mughals, and it looks like that, well, I was gonna say that might do the trick, but now it's looking not so good with uh, reinforcements coming on the Mughal side as well. Prussia retreats out from the second battle and the third battle. So Prussia got one victory and two losses on that one. But they were fighting two on one. So here we have the France. France uh, troops are shilling. They're shilling. France and Great Britain. As uh, there's nothing really going on uh, in France right now. I don't think there's even any. Man, Sakai bought themselves a lot of time because the troops they defeated retreated like 5,000 kilometers. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so uh, Mortar is back. And hopefully he can make more sense out of this than I can because I, I am thoroughly confused. Um, I think I think Sic uh, Sicily maybe, <laughs> or Italy might be a little distracted. They uh, they didn't get the, their troops moving very quickly and a lot got trounced there. Uh, thankfully the front line is intact, but it doesn't look like they're gonna win this. Uh, even with the negative two straight crossing, they don't have a maneuver that's able to overcome that. And, oh, we got some zeros being rolled. And a one! Oh, their morale is so low, too. They do have a um, uh, military tactics advantage. Hey 
but I don't- Mordred, hey buddy! How are you doing? Oh, I'm excited, so much <laughs> chaos! It, yeah, we left this in a bit of an interesting state for you after uh, Rose left. And yeah, mm -hmm. we've got a big fight going on between Hanover and France at the moment. Is that what you were just looking at? I'm looking at Sicily, oh. where uh, Italy's troops just uh, just absolutely got their ass handed to them. Uh, there is one fort protecting them, but it's a level two fort, and it is going to fall very quickly. It looks like it's being assaulted too. Yeah, and this is one of the things that Rose and I were commenting on. So Italy usually super defensible, especially up there in the north, but they didn't upgrade any of their forts, and they're now kind of paying the price. It of is that, that problem. is like the rallying cry of a lot of nations in here is we didn't upgrade our forts because it's happened again and again and again that uh wars uh just end up being quick um quick actions because nobody went past level two forts in a lot of areas and now we've got this situation where uh, italy's troops have almost no morale and nowhere to run and we have a big fight going on between France and Hanover in the north in one of the places that has upgraded their forts and it's holding the the, uh, the the frontier as a result. We actually have two fights because one of the uh, Hanoverian armies managed to catch one of the French armies trying to reinforce, but France has traced a different path. They are force marching to make sure they can get there in time. But I'm a little bit surprised that they are still pursuing this fight because they are taking a minus two. And with that minus two, they are also taking a royal thrashing. Meanwhile, the fight above, it's Hanover that's taking the minus two. So maybe the French and the British want to be thinking about reinforcing the fight in Namur instead of the one in Liège. Although Liège is maybe relieving a siege. But it does look like the Hanoverians are about to lose both of the fights. Yes, they have just lost the Namur fight. And there we go. Some of the units are leaving Liège and the French have actually won both of those. And uh, the Italians uh, are about to get stack wiped. Their army. I managed to uh, scroll over here just in time. We've got 16,000 against 2,000. 16 might win, but the 95 against 91,000, it is not looking good for those guys. And there we go. That is the Italians retreating one province yeah. over. Are we going to take advantage of the situation, though? At the moment, Croatia's chosen to go after the 15 instead of the 92. I I, I probably would have gone for the big one uh, sooner, but maybe they wanted a month. Maybe they're waiting for a month to tick by so they get the mora more morale to be able to stack wipe them better. I'm not sure. Surely it would make it harder to stack wipe them because if yeah. they have the extra morale, they'll be <laughs> just able to run away again. Yeah, exactly. I probably would have gone for uh, the immediate fight and left the 16 because now you've, you've taken a negative two, you rolled a zero. I really want to go and see what else is going on, but the the end of the Italian armed forces as we know them is yeah, kind of a big it's deal. It's a meat grinder. It is a meat grinder in there. And they held out again. They are bouncing to... Are oh, they going to get yep. attack killed by 0 0.7? 700 soldiers are about to take uh, almost 100,000 captive. And there we go. They are gone. Yep. Italy is effectively yep, there we go. this war. Got it, got it on that one. So that was the the, the absolute end of Italy's troops right there there's no army left and only a small navy meanwhile on the <laughs> russian frontier we've got the prussians and the russians mo moving troops together russia just smashing down a couple of the Finns who found themselves out of position the Mughals and the russians seem to be gathering together to try and take out the prussians but at the moment not a huge amount of movement so just ju just for those of you who are curious every one of those croatian soldiers right there captured 125 Point nine troops. That is going to be medals. Per medals per all man. round. Medals all round for that. <laughs> Every, everybody gets rewarded there. And we have a couple of British colonials getting wiped. But then here we go. We have another French and yep. Hanoverian fight going on in Liège at the moment. 90,000 against 60,000 with 52,000 Swiss coming in. Another 26,000 there in reserve ready to come in. But we can see England sitting on the sidelines with 100,000. And actually looking over to the north, we've got another 80,000 Hanoverians. So both sides having many, many bodies to throw into this particular grinder. And as soon as this one's over, we do have another live rendering to show off entitled The Heroes of Cairo. Definitely well, want to see that. 
Let's wait until this uh, this battle ends before we show that off again. So many reinforcements waiting in the wings, though. Everybody is making sure they're reinforcing at the correct time, it looks like. Well, we did see in the previous Great War a battle of 700,000 fighting in just one conflict. Uh, the Russians alone having 500,000 in that particular... In fact, it was more than that. Because Russia had half a million on their own. Um, but this is shaping up to be another big one, but it's not going to be quite reaching such lengths. Just because... The different theatres of war are so much expanded. And here we go, Prussia and Russia are clashing on the Russian borders. We've got 50, 60,000 Prussians fighting against 30, no, no 70,000 uh, Russians and Mughals. We've got another Prussian stack going into Mazia to try and take those guys out. More Prussians feeding in. 100,000 against 250. Who's going to win that one? That's going to be the interesting one, especially as Prussia is fighting on a minus two. Uh, this battle, the, the battle on the French uh, frontier is still going on. Reinforcements filtering in. And we've still got the 80k against 230 over here on the Mughals. The Mughals just backing out. They're keeping 200,000 there. It's fine. And then there is the 50,000 against 77,000 Russians, which I think it's going to be a little bit closer. But the Russians have uh, won. It was the Prussians who gave way on both sides. And looking Back over, over here, it looks like the Swiss morale is keeping this battle going. Almost eight morale uh, to 6.1 on the French side. So the Swiss morale is keeping them really going. And interestingly, immediately south of them in Luxembourg, we've got the British stack of 80k um, assaulting the forts here. And there are only a thousand men left. So it looks like they may well complete that assault um, before anyone can reinforce. So it looks like Luxembourg and Liège might be about to fall yep. both of them. There it is. All right, do we want to pop up that uh, that Chapel Comics real quick there? The Heroes of Cairo! <laughs> so, yeah, we Songhai. do have a couple of Songhai <laughs> looking at the same thing. Uh, and in a few minutes, we are going to have, uh, upon their request, Great Britain joining us. Uh, I've been told they have something to tell us. I don't know what it is, so we'll figure it out in a few minutes. And we've all been kept very much in the... Uh in the mystery about this one. Mm -hmm. Something they wanted to do a couple of hours ago, waiting for the appointed hour. And it is drawing nearer. Yeah, it's like they, they wanted to tie whatever this is to a very specific time, like real-time time. And we were kind of assuming, oh, this is probably just the declaration of war on the world. Too late. <laughs> oh, that's come and gone. Yeah. What's going to top this, I wonder? Meanwhile, things in Africa seeming relatively quiet at the moment. The uh, the line in the sand has been drawn and they are just keeping to their own sides. We do have further conflicts going on in the Prussian-Russian border. However, yeah, I'm watching that. <laughs> with two separate fights going on, if you want to continue that, I'll keep an eye on the French border. Yeah, we've got uh, two twin battles going on. Again, Russia versus the Prussians and Mughals versus the Prussians. Prussians kicking Russia's butt, but Russia having endless reserves uh, to filter in here. And the Mughals, 250,000 men fighting 75,000 right now. Uh, the Prussians are holding out, but it doesn't look like they're going to be able to pull a victory there. Uh, and it looks like the Prussians might beat the Russians, though. Yeah, they just fed in another 25k to the big uh, three quarters of a million uh, stack of the enemies. They've got 80k, which they can now send in. Russia with only 30, so if those extra Prussians arrive, then this might well be a very different story. So something to note is that uh, this this many casualties this far into the world war, Prussia still has almost a half a million men in the bank. And Russia is just about scraping the barrel. And that's one of the real danger points that we identified with Russia, because going into this, Russia had 100,000 uh, manpower maximum. Prussia had 400,000. Russia had 17,000 ducats sitting in the bank with no buildings built whatsoever they have not been building anything this entire game i i, I i'm getting news um uh, apparently great britain has canceled their announcement because there's a world war going on <laughs> so it probably was an announcement that we're going to go to war we're already at war <laughs> something along those lines a uh, big old battle in um north africa right now big old it battle looks... in germany too uh, 150,000 Brits against a bunch of Swiss and French against Hanover. Hanover just beat the French, though. And um, Andalusia just beat the Mamluks and co. Looks like the biggest battle going on right now might be the Swiss and the British with Hanover. 
um, going on on the frontier there again. Songhai might be about to stack wipe some Persians in Gaza. Persia being kept caught with no leader and no morale, but no, they did manage to hold out just long enough to make good their escape. How's Persia doing these days? Uh, Persia is running out of manpower. Oh yeah, they're down to just 7,000. How much professionalism do they have? They can tap it four times, and each one of those is going to be worth 37,000. So they've still got about 100,000 in the bank. They, they've still got a little bit. Uh, I'm actually a little surprised Purchase income's not higher than it is, given how much land they have and in which nodes they're straddling. Um, their income is only about 100. I expected it to be significantly higher than that. Especially considering... Ah. Trade ideas. They 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 took trade ideas as their fourth and haven't finished it yet. Um, and they haven't actually finished humanist ideas either. So they're having issues uh, gathering the trade. And I was going to say some of the uh, the trade goods down there are amazing. Like this is one of the biggest concentrations of silk, and that can really start to pay off. Silk and cloth, mm -hmm. great combo. Uh, the, the the one thing I will note is that all this war is, is it seems to be pretty stagnant so far in terms of one nation one side pushing another one uh, very heavily. There are some nations that are running low on manpower now, and some that are very, very high. And I think that's really going to be kind of showing the, the, the meta multiplayers versus those who may not necessarily do that. Like, looking at the number of casualties in the uh, War of Mamelukian Aggression, which is the Mamluks versus France, uh, 3.7 million people have died to combat alone. There's another million that have died to attrition. Crazy. Big battle forming up in Prussia. Prussia versus uh, everybody over here, which is Russia and the um, the Mughals. But Prussia really liking to spread the combats out. They know that uh, individually they've got the quality and they just want to hit as many enemies mm -hmm. as they can just to deny the, their opponents the, uh, the numerical advantage. Uh, it, they, they have been doing that. It, it, and in terms of causing casualties, it's been good, but they have been losing more battles than they've been winning doing that but they have been causing a lot of casualties, but they might know that Russia's having manpower issues. And uh, how are the Mughals doing actually? Mughals are running low too, only 40,000 left in the bank. Um, they do have 40% army professionalism though, so they got eight taps on that. Yeah, Jerusalem running low, Andalusia running low, Croatia still good, Romania still good, uh, France, France still good, Hanover. I wonder how Hanover's doing. Hanover's out. So, yeah, yep, that's going to be a bad time for them. Prussia is the one that's head and shoulders above everybody else in terms of manpower right now. If you didn't know better, you would you would say they weren't even at war, given how much uh, they've got exactly 420,000 men in the bank right now. I mean, the surprising one's Croatia. They have 368,000. I haven't lost. I wonder if they just haven't lost a lot of troops because they were just smashing Italy's face off. Well, actually, going into this, Croatia, I think, was second to Prussia in total uh, troop types, uh, total troop numbers. In terms of losses, though, I'll bet most of those have been burdened by France, because France also had equal. They had 400,000. They're down to 170. We'll note, though, Italy and Bavaria are out of the war now. They have been they have been pieced out. And we have got another big fight going on, 100,000 Hanoverians against 200,000 French, and then another 150,000 Hanoverians fighting against 200,000 Brits. So Hanover kind of going with the uh, the Prussian doctrine of separate battles, but I'm not sure that that's necessarily going to pay off for them, especially as they're taking fights, which are minus twos. Um, th it seems like a lot of players are starting to uh, do this twin battle strategy here, trying to knock, uh, you know, pin down enemy reinforcements before they can get in there. And the British were just beaten by the Hanoverians, who are now going to need to work hard to take... Luxembourg back again uh, before they can reinforce, but in fact, they also won the Battle of Verdun. Oh ho, that's going to be an interesting <laughs> one. <laughs> uh, it does look like Luxembourg's about to fall, though. It's at 49%. Sorry, go. I was just going to say that the uh, the Russians are continuing to push into Prussia, and what we saw happen last time is Prussia fighting on while completely occupied because they were just Wait. being financed by Britain. And I do wonder if they're going to do that again. They've still got 13,000 ducats in the bank. They've still got 400,000 manpower. They should be pretty good to go for quite some time. Yeah. They are maxed out on loans, and they aren't getting any subsidies just yet, but they've got plenty of money in the bank to keep this going. All of the British subsidies are going to France, which is part of their trade agreement that they have. 70 ducats a month. It's like Songhai is finally starting to move its troops into North Africa. Jerusalem is uh, getting hit from the north now. We've got Romanians and Bahmanis in there. 
So we do. 60,000 Bahmanis, Romanians, another 70,000, including a three-star general of 5631. Russia going two-on-one on their frontier here and handily winning this is impressive. I mean, Prussia just doing Prussia things at this point. Uh, anytime you're going, if, if, if it's one player on two players and you're winning, I'm all for it. This is, it, it just reminds me of like the, uh, one of those first Hanover, Han, Hanoverian War, never gonna get that right, Hanoverian Wars, or uh, early on with the, um, uh, uh, God, uh, Novgorod. It's, it's nice to root for the person getting dogpiled on. True. Though I'm of the personal opinion that whenever a player looks close to forming Prussia, then you should expend oh. all available resources to stop them. Oh yeah, if you're if you're if going anywhere near Prussia, you're putting a target on your back. That's that's for certain. But it is still fun to watch the fight. Absolutely. Anyway, we Big have another fight. Gaza. No, sorry. No, I was looking at France. Oh, <laughs> it's all over the place. Gaza's got a hundred thousand versus a hundred thousand, two hundred thousand against hundred thousand. What's happening in France? Similar size battle up that way. I'll try and flick between them. So we got 200,000 Brits against 160,000 Swiss with another 100,000 Hanoverians hanging out nearby, ready to reinforce. Meanwhile, the entire French army is also hanging nearby, ready to reinforce. We'll go and take a look in Africa, where it's 80,000 Andalusians just retreating in the face of the 200,000 Jerusalem. I'm not exactly sure what the, the idea was there. They did not even attempt to move the reinforcements in it, and unless it was just a delaying action. But they've got all these troops stationed around here that are just standing still, no leaders or anything, just trying to not take attrition, it looks like. Scroll down, take a quick look to see what that was looking like. But yeah, it's, it's, it's chaotic. It's very chaotic. Okay, so taking a very quick look at Italy to see the cost of them giving up, and Rome has fallen to Croatia. Going at it once again, Russia feeling that they are now ready to re-enter the fray. 